we go into a new computer animation tutorial and what we're going to be going over today is as I test play this animation animating a little April Fool's Day jack-in-the-box card so um, using a couple techniques that we've gone over before but I'll redemonstrate is um, creating a text mask or a layer mask to unveil this text using zooming in using the camera feature and then a simple shape tween to open the box and then in uh, part two I'll go into actually animating the jack-in-the-box so let's get started in this project we'll go file new we're gonna use the standard preset size 550 by 4 24 frames a second and go ahead and get started We'll start out by creating a couple of layers here, and um, three to be exact, and each one is going to be a different part of the box. We're going to need a layer for the front of the box, we're going to need a layer for the top of the box, and we're actually going to need a layer as well for the inside of the box. And so we'll start by going to our front layer, choosing our rectangle tool. Um, we're going to go to click on the outline or stroke color and that to be nothing and then my fill color for my gift box and yours can be whatever you would like it to be I'm going to go with kind of like a bluish purple here sure uh, we're gonna put this gift box down in the lower right hand corner you could put it in either corner really but that will give us some space here to have our text kind of unveil like we were seeing before so uh, going for the top now of the box we could use the rectangle tool again actually and just click and drag to make a rectangle that's of similar size here or similar width rather but we want it to be not quite as tall um, the other thing I'm going to do really quick is just change the color of this so that it is slightly darker than the, let's see, than the shape that it's next to. So that's a little too close. So I want to make sure that I have decent contrast going on there. Um, let's see, maybe this, that works. Um, and then I'm just going to take the corners and maybe even squish them down a little bit of this box to create that kind of illusion of three-dimensional space here so um, gotta move this up just a tiny bit looks like that's lining up pretty good to give me kind of the top and make sure that that's on a separate layer the top is gonna open up and so that's gonna need to be on a separate layer than the front and then the inside of the box is actually just gonna be a copy of the top so select your top of the box, hit Command C in order to copy that. We'll go to the inside layer, go edit and paste in place. Now we're going to take this top one here, the one that is now on our inside layer. Let's go to our paint palette up in the corner here and we're going to make this a linear gradient. So what we're going to do is create a gradient that makes it appear to be like really more like it's going inside the box here. So what we're going to need is actually to move black over towards the middle. I'm going to create another black swatch just by clicking right underneath this bar here, my gradient bar, and I'm going to put that also in the side there. I'm going to click and move this white over and then just click right underneath on this corner here to get a second white swatch. And I'm going to take this white one and move it all the way to the side. So we should have white on either side and black in the middle. And what you can see now is I'm going to try and get these black areas to line up with kind of the corner edge of the box there. So as I move this over, you'll see it kind of getting close to that corner. And that's kind of creating the illusion here that this is like a side, this is the back, and then this is another side. So I've got to move this side over as well until it's getting pretty close to that corner spot. Cool. And so that gives us a little bit more kind of a three-dimensional sort of look to the inside of the box here. Now we will need to reorder our layers, well, layers rather. We'll take this inside layer, move it underneath the top. So now the top is on top, inside is underneath the top, and then the front is in the front. All right, so now we pretty much have the box part ready here. Um, and so what we'll actually end up doing first now is we'll go over how to add in our text here. So I'm going to add a new layer, move it all the way to the top, I'm going to call this text. And so what we're going to also create is another layer for a mask. The way we're unveiling this text is by using a mask. So let's take our type tool and on the 
text layer. We're just going to click and drag to make a text box. And then I'm going to write in what was I putting in here? Just wanted to tell you, I think was something along those lines. Now you could put any text you want in here, obviously, but um, just wanted to tell you. And I'm going to put this into kind of like a nice, maybe scripty font, something that's kind of fancy. So then the font that's on the outside, you know, something nice and cute on the outside of this card or the beginning of the card rather. Just realized my color for my font was this gradient, which is not going to work out. So I'm going to make this kind of like a darkish purple color. Let's match with my other text I have here. Just wanted to tell you, just wanted to say, yeah, there's, there's any number of things that you could put in here. And so once, and like I said, something cute here and then something fun and maybe outrageous at the end part. So now we're gonna put in the text mask and we're just gonna take our rectangle tool again. Let's choose a color, something that we don't already have here so these don't get confused with other drawings of ours um, and draw another uh, rectangle right next to your text here. Make sure your outline is off again. And what we're gonna do with this mask layer is we won't turn into a mask yet, but let's kind of figure out, let's open up some frames here. Let's open up, we're gonna want actually 170 frames total for this project. So I'm just scrolling down to the end here of my project, or not the end, but going down to 170 right now. And I'll go ahead and you can either hit F5 on your keyboard, or you can right click and go to insert frame. And that will insert some just basic frames for us to um, to work with in our animation here. Now what we'll do is this text mask is going to grow and be a bigger rectangle that covers the text by the 30th frame. So I'm going to 30th, I'm going to hit F6 on my keyboard, or you can right click and go to create keyframe. Key We're going to insert a keyframe here. Now at this 30th frame, with that highlighted, I'm going to select my mask and stretch it out bigger so that'll cover all of my text. And what that's gonna do, once we add in a shape tween here, it's gonna make that grow from first frame being next to it. We're gonna click, right click, go to shape tween. And then um, that's going to make that box grow to expand over our text. And then once we right click here and turn this into a mask layer, you'll see it locks up both the layers. Um, you cannot easily unlock them, but and that unveils our text just like so. So as the mask grows, it unveils. So wherever you have a mask going, it's gonna unveil what's on the layer underneath it. So that's why we can see none here when the mask is small and then all of it by the end. So that's the first step here. Now what we're gonna go into next is adding in a camera layer. So we wanna zoom in on this box after the text comes across. So I'm gonna hit this camera button here and we're gonna get a new layer into our project called camera layer. And we're gonna go down to the 70th frame of our animation here and we'll hit F6 on our keyboard or you can right click as always and go to insert keyframe. We need a keyframe there on the 70th and then we're gonna also need a keyframe on the 115th frame about. And that's gonna be our zoom distance. So you can see we got some controls going on here. So right at the 70th, that's when our movement's gonna start and then we'll be zoomed in right around the box on the 115th. So with that 115 frame selected, we're gonna just bring this slider over here and then I'm gonna move my box so that it is kind of right in the center-ish area here. And what I may do is just move my text up a little bit because I wanna make sure that, um, that I don't end up running into my text once I'm zoomed in on the box there. Cause see how I want it to be outside of that frame. So what I'm gonna do is just take, I'll take this um, text layer here and I'm just gonna move that up just a smidge. I'm gonna take this rectangle here, just move that up a smidge and this rectangle also move it up. 
a smidge. So that should all work fine still. And then once I get down to the end here, you can see I don't see the edge of the text in my camera frame. So if I go back to my camera tool here, let's see, I can still move it, okay. So let's check out what this will look like actually. I, I'm not sure if I'll see that there. I may have to tweak that just a little bit more. But what we want is a classic tween, right in between those two spots where we put those frames, those keyframes on our camera zoom layer. So let's see when I press command and return how this plays out. Just wanted to tell you, and then a little pause, and then zooming in. So I'm gonna move that text up just a little bit more because I need to make sure that I have enough space for this box to open. And that's about all the space I want. So let's move up that text a little bit more. So again, I'm just gonna click on the text, hold shift and click up once on my, e, uh, on my arrow key. Again, holding shift, click up once, just to move that rectangle up one smidge, hold shift and again. So just working my way up there. Let's give this another test play. Just wanted to tell you, a pause and then a zoom in, and that's gonna be perfect. I got the, just about the right amount of space to make this box open here, which is what we're going to do next. So what we're gonna do is go down to, I think what I wanted to have happen here is to have the box start to open just before we get to all the way zoomed in. So if we go to our 110th frame on your top layer, as in the top of the box, we're gonna hit an F6 there for a new keyframe. And so what that's gonna tell us is right at this frame, we're actually gonna change this top of this box to a different shape. So what we'll do is go edit, and um, actually I could just take my transform tool, and let's see what happens here. If I just switch this, yeah, there we go. So I just pulled that side, I pull the bottom up and, it, and then it's reversed this shape a little bit. And this is the shape that we want actually here. It's kind of a thin trapezoid type of shape here. And this, I'm gonna move up to just be right along the edge of the back of the box there. So that, if we kind of go here, it looks like that box just starts to open up. And then what we'll have that do is um, let's say it goes, it opens over to about the 120th frame. So just, just about 10 frames in there. We're going to put a new keyframe and then we're going to take this and turn this top shape into a rectangle. So I'm just going to go over the corners there and pick these corners up so that they get to be kind of like a, an open box in the back here. The top has been opened all the way. So, and then what I'll do in between here is use a good old shape tween, and that should kind of create that illusion that the box kind of slowly opens there. And then I think the only other thing I was going to add in is one little nice detail here. Um, I was going to add one new layer back at the beginning of our projects here. So we want to add a nice little bow on top of this box. I'm just going to create a bow layer here. Um, I'm going to actually use uh, the paintbrush tool, which is a tool that I haven't, don't use too, too often. Um, nice thing about the paintbrush tool is I can click on this brush library here and I can make a nice fancy, let's say, take a calligraphy brush or an ink brush and I can make a nice bow. So I'm going to double click and then you'll see your style, brush style uh, change here and just kind of draw a nice little bow. And that looks like it's using actually my pencil color. So I'm going to hit Command Z and I'm going to change this color to be something nice and bright. Maybe some orange here. And let's try that one more time. And there we go. Kind of a cute little brush. Um, if I made this stroke a little bit bigger, I'm sure it would be bigger. So let's go ahead and kind of just layer over that. And there we go. That's kind of coming together now. And you can just kind of keep layering them on there if you want. That looks pretty good now. So what I do need to do with that though is as I test play, watch what happens. The bow's gonna stay there. I'm gonna need to make it disappear. Just wanted to tell you. And like I said, the bow stays. So we're gonna need that bow to go. 
And so that's really the last move here for this part one video. So right when this frame goes to open up, I'm going to hit a new F6 keyframe there, and then just hit delete. Simply delete that bow from being in the picture then. So right when it starts to open, it disappears. And so, again, one last tester. So just wanted to tell you, and then zoom in on the little gift box here, and it opens. And at this point, you could really make this do anything. If you want to make this for any occasion, we're going to go on in part two to make this a jack-in-the-box and have a jack kind of bop out here, with the spring attached, and say, April Fools. So um, tune in for the second part if you want to keep on going, and hopefully you're having some luck with uh, your project and having fun being creative.